when we were approached with this by uh, by a few of our alumni, um, you know, I thought it was a great idea, and had really no idea the level of professionalism and um, just excellence that would surround this documentary. The only other one that is nationally known is called A Hero for Daisy, and that was made uh, after the Yale women's rowing team um, basically having no locker room. They had to wait in the bus for their men to finish showering in their locker room to get on the bus to go back to, to campus. Um, they went into the athletic director's office and stripped um, and basically said, these are the bodies that you're doing this to. And since then, um, to my knowledge, this is the first documentary on women's rowing that's really gone, gone deep into the history of it. So it's, it's special, and yet it's, it's, uh, it's the perfect fit because we were one of the few programs that was there as well, and we did something similar for a very similar reason. Sorry. Uh, what's it mean to, to you in this program to have that kind of spotlight on a sport that maybe doesn't get that spotlight as often like you mentioned? Um, it was a little uncomfortable, to be honest. Um, again, we weren't, we weren't, the scope of the project changed as we went along because the filmmakers fell in love with our program, which happens a lot with people who don't know anything about it, um, but want to sort of document it. So um, it was, it was a little bit unsettling uh, because we're used to sort of being on our own <laughs> and doing things on our own, but it was really fun and the, the women really embraced it. And um, I think being able to show what we do on a daily, not just on race day, which you can't see much of anyway, but uh, this was a better look at what their lives are actually like. Um, and that has never been done. So it was exciting and the, the filmmakers were just Top notch. They're extremely professional and uh, really good at what they do. What do you hope people take away that don't know anything about your sport or, or your team or your program? That these student athletes are just as committed, just as physical, just as uh, academically gifted as any other sport, and that you know we're part of the Badger athletic family, and um, it's a beautiful sport that requires an incredible amount of discipline and just grit and grinding <laughs> work. B.B., what was the biggest revelation to you seeing this project unfold? I think that we, we actually do fit in. You know, again, we're, we're pretty much removed from the mainstream, and so having this kind of attention and this spotlight sort of, even though it was a not a giant spotlight, but a pretty small one um, so far, I think uh, helped us see that we really are a part of this and we deserve to be a part of this. And we hope very much that we make Wisconsin proud and every other rowing athlete in the country proud. How has rowing changed? You, the basics are there. I mean, you're on a, you're in a boat, you're on the water, yeah. you're, you're pulling your weight, you're doing what you have to do, but how has your sport changed from the start of this documentary to this moment? Um, so back in the 70s, from then until now. Um, you're absolutely right in saying that the mechanics of rowing haven't changed at all. The sport itself, it's very, um, it's very simple in a way. I, I always say it's a lot like golf in that you're basically trying to do the same thing over and over and over again. Conditions change. Um, but the, the mechanics of it are the same. But for us, it's either four or eight rowing athletes and a coxswain that have to do that motion right together. So that is, that is the fundamental challenge of rowing. What has changed is the world and everything in the world and what the student athletes are dealing with as, as students, as athletes, as women, uh, the whole nine yards. That has changed just like it has for everybody else. Technology's changed, um, but the basics of it have not. The needs of it have not. Um, and really the grit and the, and the lessons learned have not changed very much. Um, 
Can you talk a little about the connection? Um, talking about the 1970s, Carrie Graves is someone who's kind of included in this documentary, um, kind of bridging those days to now and her kind of role in that. Yes, Carrie, um, I mean, we're so fortunate that she was a part of our program because she's meant so much to so many women to the rowing world, especially the American rowing world. She's an icon in our sport, a true icon in our sport. There's no one else like her. There's many close, and many of them are badgers, actually. But, um, you know, she was the epitome of a successful rowing athlete. Tough. Um, she's a grinder, so you just don't give up. You just keep going no matter what. And um, sort of a free spirit. Um, and even though she moved on, she stayed in the sport. She went on to coaching and uh, coached successfully at a couple of other programs, but she was always a Badger at heart. And so we had that connection. We didn't know each other that well before I came to Wisconsin, but after that, we were, we were connected. So um, she is a part of our history. She's a big part of our history. Um, Coach, how did the student athletes react Hmm. Or how did they take being part of the documentary and the process and then finally seeing it all come together? Yeah, that's a really good question because none of us knew what we were getting into, really. And again, because they really wanted to dive in more so, because they fell in love with both what we were doing and it had never been done before in a documentary, and then the team themselves, um, they wanted to be more involved. They wanted to be more present. So they actually came back more often than they were planning to. Um, but the women really um, embraced it, I think. It, it, was, it was challenging a little bit because it was so different. But I think they appreciated the attention to begin with. And then they just appreciated the fact that somebody really cared about what they were doing and, and could see what they were putting into it other than just the beauty on the water. And just to finish up with that a little bit, the doc, again, the documentary is meant to be a, 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 a tribute to our first national championship team, which was mo made up in a large part of the women that really started the program. Um, but it, also, it showed that history and what these women now are looking forward to and trying to attain to. So it, it really did a great job of bringing that together. And that's what I think we all appreciated when we watched it. Because we didn't know, really, what it was going to be like. So watching the full thing was really great. Um, the team celebrated its 50th anniversary in the past year. For the current student athletes, did they learn things, not only from the anniversary, but through the documentary process about just the legacy? I mean, did it mean more for them to learn more about the history? Well, I think it's something that we've been, we as the staff have been working to teach them, but this opened up new doors and the opportunity to really have them listen to it. Um, it wasn't just something out there that didn't really affect them. They really understood that this actually was something that affected them massively, that they would not be here were it not for Title IX, Wisconsin's embracing of women's rowing. And every fight that's happened since then to keep this happening. Further questions? Yeah. Um, what does it mean to have a, be at a program that has that history? You, uh, you were talking earlier before you got up here about other schools in the Big Ten and how Wisconsin kind of led the way. What does that do to this program? What does it mean to be at a place like that? For Old people like me, it means, it means an awful lot. I think we have to work hard to make sure our current women know that they're a part of something special because otherwise it's just something that Wisconsin does. And they don't understand the respect that they don't even necessarily have to earn because the people that it came before them earned. So we're helping them see that they need to keep earning that respect on an ongoing basis just by you know, by showing up, by bringing their best, by being tough and gritty and being like those women that started it, you know, a long time ago. But when I first started uh, in the Big Ten, I, 
started the Michigan State program. And at that time, um, there were only a couple of Big Ten schools. There wasn't Big Ten rowing. Um, Wisconsin was the only Big Ten school that had a varsity women's program. And so as teams started adding um, to come into compliance with Title IX, uh, we found ourselves like, oh, we, we, need to, we need to sort of put this together. So Wisconsin was at the front of that because they knew what to do. So the, the, the Midwest Championships was the de facto Big Ten Championships until we had enough teams to actually have one. And when that happened, it was on Lake Wingra, and Wisconsin was the host, and we've hosted three times since then. Four times since then, and we're going to host it again at uh, Devil's Lake, not this May, but next May. Um, and so... I think Wisconsin was pivotal in showing other Big Ten universities and athletic departments that, yeah, you can have a successful women's rowing program and have it be up to the level of Big Ten athletics. Um, just one quick transition to the current team and just maybe an overview of how the yeah. season's going quick. Um, the season's really going well. Uh, we, you know, we had a, a pretty down year last year, and so we had to rebuild. Um, we were rebuilding with a lot of most of the same people, which is a big, a, a bit of a challenge. But they've embraced it 100 percent. And every race we get faster, which is the Wisconsin way. Uh, we haven't always been successful with that in the past, but we have been so far this year, and I'm confident we're going to keep that rolling. Our goal is to qualify for the NCAA's um, again, and we've got to keep showing up to make that happen. Last one for me, is there any, it's, it's a, obviously a big team sport, but is there any people that are standing out right now that are maybe the leaders on the team in the boat or any, any couple of athletes to stand, that uh, stick out? Oh, I think you're right. As a team sport, it's hard. Uh, they're, they're, our, I would say our whole senior class is standing out, and I guess that's not a dodge. It's the truth. Uh, we, we don't have individuals. Um, that want their names recognized. Uh, they may want it, but they understand it's not in the best interest of the team. But our senior class truly has done what they needed to do to turn the, the, the team around from last year. Um, and they took that on during the summer. And as hard as, you know, the cha there's always challenges to that. And they've steadfastly continued to not only lead, but bring the juniors, sophomores, and freshmen up so they can lead as well. And that, to me, is the standout of all standouts. So senior class, check your rosters, everybody. Look for the seniors. What did your current student athletes think of this? What kind of feedback did you get from them? They haven't seen the whole thing yet. So they're going to see it um, with everybody else on May 8th. And uh, again, it was last year for the team was challenging, and we needed to move forward. And now is the perfect time for them to be able to see this and uh, really appreciate it and really see it for what it is. It's a tribute to the team, not just focusing on the athletes from last year.